the degree of public attention right now, there's press conferences, there's news stories updated minute by minute, and we're seeing con- congressional hearings. Much of this discussion is when can we have a vaccine ready? What yeah. you talked a bit about. Um, you know, this oh, isn't even very well known for um, uh, physicians. So let me just take a minute to describe this. This so is what I. This is what I was hoping. The yeah. vaccine development in the U.S. starts with an idea, usually from biotech startup or academia. From the time they come up with the idea until the time a vaccine is licensed, it takes seven to ten years usually and about $1 billion U.S., okay? One of the fastest was the vaccine just licensed in uh, December for Ebola. That took six years, in spite of the public health emergency that Ebola presented. So what will happen is an idea will be come up with, and then you'd go into animal testing. You find an appropriate animal model, and you're looking to see, is it safe, and is it uh, effective? So you're going to see if there's immunogenicity. Does this actually raise protective immune response? We don't know in this case because there's no correlative protection. So you will challenge those animals with the live virus to see if it protects. If it does, then you apply to the FDA, go into phase one studies with their permission. These are called first-in-man trials. They involve tens of people. So this week, NIH and Moderna started the first trial of a SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. Uh, It's an mRNA-based vaccine. We can talk about that later if you'd like. And they will test 46 people looking for evidence of any toxicity, safety issues, and trying to figure out what's the right dose, what's the right route of administration, how many doses, how far apart, that sort of thing. If, they, if it passes phase one, it goes into phase two, where you now enroll hundreds of people with the same eye. Is it immunogenic? Is it safe? Then you, you give those data to the FDA. They look at them. And if they agree that it seems to be safe and they have some benefit, you go into phase three. Now you're, you're enrolling thousands to tens of thousands. That, that gap between phase two and phase three is called the valley of death because the vast majority of vaccine candidates, antivirals, other medications will not make it past the valley of death. That costs hundreds of millions of dollars to do. And when you think about it, when you're looking at an epidemic, let's just take Zika was a good example. Ebola turned out to be a good example. Ideally, you want to do a randomized controlled clinical trial. So uh, roughly half might get the vaccine candidate, half an irrelevant vaccine or a placebo, and you wait and see what happens. Well, sometimes the epidemic doesn't allow us to do that. They have to just test it in animals. It burns itself out. If the phase three results are positive, the FDA looks at it. They make the decision to license it. And then they usually request phase four studies. So we know about safety in hundreds of thousands of people. So long-winded answer to say we're not going to have a vaccine for this epidemic. Maybe the next one. Um, lots of vaccine candidates were uh, developed for SARS. Not one of them got past phase one. Uh-huh. The only exception to this is the president holds the powers of emergency use authorization. He could decide that at some point in the future, the risk is so great that the benefit and unknown risk of a less or unknown uh, untested vaccine would be worth it. Otherwise, by law, the regulatory pathway has to be followed. 